And what are we going to do today? We're going to talk a little bit about electricity. But we had a couple questions, a couple of things that remained apparently unresolved for some people. And so let's get to those first. Okay, let's look at this. One file says, get him up here, says, Chris Langdon, he talked about that the other day, or I mentioned him, uh, basically said the universe is God, and we're equivalent to its brain cells. Okay, I don't know why he says it's, uh, should say his, but yeah, we're in the age of pronouns. Um, a lot of the CTMU, okay, uh, is restating, meaning the theory that this uh, Langenfeld proposed, is restating old esoteric beliefs using math and predicate logic. It's not physics, it's metaphysics. It is worth reading, in my opinion. Well, I don't think so, and let me tell you why, and I'll go over here with the only good thing that Mr. Rutherford said, and that was a long time ago, okay, beginning of the century, and he said, all science is either physics or stamp collecting. You know, you have all these so-called philosophers, Plato and Kant and uh, Ayn Rand and so on, and all these people called themselves or thought of themselves as philosophers. And no, there's no such thing as, as uh, you know, none of these things uh, like ontology and metaphysics and epistemology and philosophy of physics. No such monsters. There's either physics or they're stamp collecting. Okay, so that's one thing that Mr. Rutherford said correctly. Okay? And so, you know, uh, this nonsense about metaphysics, what the hell is metaphysics? You know, uh, you either do physics or you do stamp collecting, period, okay? Straightforward. Okay, and here we do physics. So uh, if you're going to move concepts around, well, you're doing stamp collecting because you haven't provided a physical interpretation and explanation for a mechanism. Okay, another fellow says another issue needs to be resolved in this issue, mass versus weight. Some people are still stuck on this, and they're going to fight it to the last breath because this is what they learned in high school or college or whatever. And uh, we need to settle this and kill the notions because... It's irrational, okay? and we'll see it here. Fellow says, weight is a dynamic concept. It takes two frames of reference to measure. Uh, your scale at zero and your scale with weight. And again, uh, no, weight is not dynamic. Weight is uh, static. And let me show you here. Let me give you a picture of why it's a static concept. Okay? And here's it. It's a static concept. Why? Because uh, science doesn't do measurement. Okay, that's the religion of mathematics. Okay, in science we have to explain. We have to give a rational explanation to a mechanism, to a physical interpretation. That's what science and physics are about. Okay, you either do physics or stamp collecting. Again, and um, it's in mathematics. The mathematical physicists, those are the people who talk about measurement and about equations and about describing. We talk about explaining. That's the difference. Okay. And weight is location specific. You have a different weight for uh, different um, locations in the universe. Even before you measure, you have weight even when you're falling, you know, uh, through the, from the sky. Uh, you say, well, I don't feel my weight. Yeah, you, you don't feel your weight, but hopefully you did not acquire weight all of a sudden when you hit the scale. And then it turns out that the mathematicians, not me, but them, they're telling you that once it hits the scale, that's called mass because that weight, that pull of gravity against of the ball in this case, against the scale, now it's static, it's staying there, it doesn't go any further, and uh, the needle moved, right? Now, now you have what they call mass. It's a measure of the amount of matter that you are measuring. And one fellow says out there, says, well, we can convert it, you know, by using the, uh, the you know, mole equation. You know, we can, we can convert those uh, into atoms. We know approximately how many atoms there are in there. Fine. If that's what mass is, uh, specify your answer in quantity of atoms. Tell me there is a trillion and one atoms. That would be the way to specify mass. But to say it's one kilogram, that's a measurement. I thought that was weight. And again, we don't have to put the weight or throw it on something. You already weigh, you already have also a certain mass, number of atoms, be, before we measure anything, before we uh, put you on a scale. The scale is only to find out exactly how many uh, either atoms or how much you weigh, okay? That's what the scale is for. Before you put anything on the scale, you already have both weight and you have mass. You have a certain number of ma uh, atoms in your body, that's ca called mass, okay? Number, uh, number of atoms, and you have a certain weight, which is how much the Earth or the Moon or the Sun is pulling on you, on the astronaut, okay? So you already have a certain weight, a certain mass before you do anything, before you get a number. And people don't understand that. They think that uh, you got to run an experiment, 
weigh something on a scale, you know, put it on a scale and then you only have weight, but that you don't have weight until you do that. Not true. Okay, so try to please get that through your head. Okay, and again, I don't know why people have difficulty uh, understanding that. Maybe their religion is being um, sacrificed and they don't like that. That's what they learned in, by rote. And so when someone tells them, look, you, you, you just memorized stuff for the test on Friday and, and you got the test right, but you never learned anything because you never learned what was secretly happening in that invisible world of yours. You know, and now you say, well, no, you already had weight. You already had mass before you put it on the scale. And say, so, whoa, I thought you needed to measure. I thought you needed to weigh something. You don't. You have weight before you weigh it. You have mass before you mass it. <laughs> okay, so let's get on with electricity now. Here we go. And by, uh, we start out by defining. We have to find out what a definition of electricity is out there. And the first rule is that if you can define it, that word is not an object, does not represent an object. Objects we do not define, objects we point to, name, we draw, we present them, we show them, you know. Uh, object is that which has shape, not that which you, you know, you can see or touch, okay. And uh, so if electricity is defined, electricity is not an object. I had uh, people from the electric universe who told me, what do you mean electricity is not an object? Of course it's an object, it's a thing. Okay, uh, why? It says, well, stick your fingers in an outlet and you'll find out why. <laughs> that was their answer. Yeah, you get a shock. And so the question was, was that electricity or was it an atom? Was it an electron? You know, electricity is a concept, dynamic concept to be more precise. Whereas uh, what touched you must have been an atom or a part of an atom. And so an atom is not electricity. Electricity is not an atom. Electricity is a process. Okay? And all dynamic processes are concepts. So how do they define it? They say uh, electricity, motion of matter that has a property of electric charge. Okay, I love the fact that they use the word electric to define electricity. Okay, that's great. Uh, and, uh, but let's find out what this chargey thing is. It says chargey, it's the, uh, the physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in what? In an electric field. So we have the electric there, electromagnetic, right? Electric field, and so electricity is a charge, and charge is electric, great. Uh, sounds like a circular definition, you know? We go around in circles here. Uh, so what is a field? Well, a field is a bunch of numbers. That's what it is, uh, value at each point in space. So uh, we have a bunch of numbers, and what they're saying is what that you experience, if you're put in an electric field, or electromagnetic field, right? You experience a force, well, we call that a charge. And so you have this lady here, we put her in a uh, field, bunch of numbers floating around, I guess, and she experiences a force. And they say that, that was charge. Okay, uh, but what is it that touched you? Was it this chargey thingy? What is it, a ghost, a spirit? I mean, we need to get to the bottom of this uh, charge thing, uh, apparently, because that's what's going to define electricity. We need to figure out what electricity is. They say it's something related to charge. Charge is some kind of spirit that, uh, uh, you know, causes a force on you when you're in a field of some kind. Not a poppy field, not a marijuana field. No, it's uh, got to be an electric field, okay, or electromagnetic. Okay, let's find out. Turns out that this chargey thing also moves, okay, even though it's defined. So we have a concept here that's going to be moving around. It says charge originates from the electron and proton. Okay, that's in the atom. Great. So now we know where it comes from. By convention, the charge carried. Okay, so we're going to carry this charge. You know, remember, you can carry watermelons, you can carry uh, chairs, maybe even rocks, and they're going to carry a charge. Okay, carried by electrons is deemed negative, and that by a proton's positive. Okay, so we have uh, these negative and positive charges that are carried by electrons. Okay, and protons, right? Okay, let's find out where they're getting to this. Uh, each electron carries the same charge of approximately minus uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, it sounds like a number. So this charge thing apparently is some kind of number. And so how do you carry a number? You know, so now it's getting weird because they define charge as what? A uh, force that you experience in a, an electric field. Now they're going to say it's positive and negative. It comes from uh, the atom, apparently, and then uh, you have the electron and the proton. They carry these 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 units known as coulombs. So I'm not sure what they're talking about. I think they're confusing numbers with physical entities here. It says the movement of electric charge, you're going to move this number, is known as an electric current. So now we know what an electric current is, which is this electricity thingy, and it's the movement of this charge, which is a number. 
So we're going to be moving this 1.6 coulombs concept, right? And that movement of that coulomb is what they call electric current or electricity. I hope you're following through, okay? Uh, current can consist of any moving charged particles. Now they're talking about moving particles. Okay, so are we moving particles or are we moving numbers? What is it that we're moving? Well, the way they do that, they uh, have this device that measures, measures, right? Remember measuring? And uh, what does it measure? It measures numbers. It measures units, measures quantities. So they're not measuring particle. They're not really measuring a thing. What they're concerned about is the number they get out of that device. And they say, oh, so many particles, each particle has so many, so many coulombs. We're not interested in the particles. We're not interested in what's going on in there because we don't even know if there are particles. What we're interested in is how many coulombs have gone by. That's what they're looking at, okay? And it says um, charge in motion, again, constitutes a current, okay? Electric current will not flow through an electric, uh, electrical insulator. They don't explain to you why it doesn't flow. They just say it won't flow. But then we're talking about electric current flowing. What was electric current? What was the movement of a charge, which is a number? So we have the flow of a movement. Oh, that's great. I mean, I think we're learning quite a bit here. The flow of a movement. And what's the movement of? The movement of a number. Coulombs. Okay, I hope you learned a lot okay, from all this, uh, these definitions that these people have. Okay, Let's see if we can uh, find out what they're looking at. Okay, well, what is this movement of charges? Okay, so here you have, it says, when a charge is placed in a location okay, with a non-zero electric field, a charge, a, a force will act on it. Okay, so we have this force. What is a force? Uh, concept? Because we're not talking about a rock, we're talking about a force. And force is what? Pull or push, I guess. So I guess there's pull or push is going to push or pull. <laughs> okay, so the push and pull is going to be uh, affecting this, uh, this charge. Okay, if the charge moves, okay, this number, this 1.6 coulomb, uh, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, if the charge moves, the electric field would be doing work. We talked about work the other day, okay, on the electric charge. The presence of a charge gives rise to an electrostatic force. Charges exert a force on each other. So we have very well a mixture because they, they say charge is essentially this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, that's what charge is because they're talking about the charge on the electron. They say the electron carries the charge, you know, like the watermelon or the rock that you carry on your shoulders. So you're carrying this charge, whatever that means, physically, from a physical standpoint. And this causes a force, causes work if it's uh, moving in an electric field. Okay, let's see if we can go a little deeper on this, see if we can get to the bottom of this. Here we have the field. A, uh, what is it? Uh, you look it up. It says a value for each point in space and time. Okay, so let's illustrate this. We're just going to go by what they say, okay? We're just going to go literally take them at face value. They say a value for each point in space and time. Let's do it, okay? We can do this. I'm sure we can. Here it is, okay? There's your field. Value at each point in space and time, okay? So we have the field, okay? Now what do we got to do next? Well, we got to put a charge in there. And for that, you need to know what a charge is. Okay, so what is a charge? Okay, let's put it in there. There it is. Charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And what are they going to do? Well, they says the charge moves inside the field. And that's going to cause work and force and all this other good stuff. One charge affects another. Okay, and it looks uh, more or less like this. Okay, now that we have it there, there's your charge moving. Okay, we have numbers moving inside numbers. That's all we have so far, according to their definitions. According to, you know, we're following them to the, to the letter. And you might say, Bill, you're making fun of these guys. You're, you're, uh, you, you, all these people did all so much work for the last 100 years, uh, 150 years maybe, uh, on trying to figure all this out, and you're just making fun of them. Well, no, I'm, I'm applying what they're saying. I'm using their words, their own words. I'm not raising any you know, a straw man here. I'm using their own words. I'm saying, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a number. What, what's, a, what's a charge? It's a coulomb of some kind. 1.6, blah, 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 blah. that's a number. Okay, what is a field? A bunch of numbers. So we have a number floating in a bunch of numbers. Maybe they're moving, maybe they're not moving, you know. But the point is, we have numbers inside of numbers. What does this have to do with physics? What have we learned about what's going on in that invisible world? You know, uh, a number moving inside a bunch of numbers. Field of numbers, uh, what, uh, value of each point in space. So this is what we have. This is, I'm just going strictly by what these people are saying, okay. I'm not putting words in their mouth. I'm not making fun of them, even though... That's how it comes across. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so let's find out if we can get uh, a little deeper in all this electricity stuff. It says, a lightweight ball suspended from a string can be charged. 
Okay, well, we're going to charge it because we're going to put all these coulombs in there, right? By touching it with a glass rod that has itself been charged by rubbing with a cloth. Okay, good. If a sm similar ball is charged by the same glass rod, it is found to repel the first. Why? Because they both have the same charge. Either they are both so-called negative or they are both positive. We still don't understand what negative and positive are. These seem to be just uh, descriptions, maybe qualitative descriptions, because we have no idea what that means physically. Okay, And... Um, so if they have the same charge, they push each other apart. Two balls that are charged with a rubber, uh, rubbed amber rod also repel each other, okay? However, if one ball is charged by the glass rod and the other by an amber rod, the two balls are found to attract each other. And again, all we have is just a description. And you say, Bill, why, uh, why did you put the magic wand? Well, you know, that's the rod that I used. But the point here is that so far we have magic because they have not explained how this is done. All they said is, it, it, it is so. We saw it in the lab. Well, yeah, you saw it in the lab, but I mean, what are we talking about here? Why does this happen? What is causing uh, the positive to attract the positive, uh, to repel the positive, negative, negative, and for the positive to attract the negative and vice versa? What is happening there? Why are they doing that? What is this negative? What is this positive? Why? Are, what's happening in that invisible world? And all they do is they have a description and say, it does so at this speed or at this acceleration, this is the force and this is how much work it created. And those are just numbers. Those are units, numbers followed by units. What have we learned about what's going on inside here? What have we learned about physics? And again, uh, Mr. Rutherford says you either do physics or you do stamp collecting. This is stamp collecting. This is just measuring and saying this is what I saw in the lab. Well, you don't need to use brains for that. I mean, you just have to say, okay, I went to the, uh, to, to the um, lab. What did you see? Well, here, I saw a ball and I let go of it and it fell downwards. So you describe it and say it went so fast, downwards. It went such a distance in so much time. That's science that you describe why the ball or how the ball fell to the floor. Why don't you explain why the ball didn't go up to the ceiling? That's what we would like to understand. Why did it go downwards? What caused it to go downwards? That's, what, that's where you have to use your brains. But to say that you observed and you measured that the ball fell downwards every time and you can do it also at home, you can repeatable experiment, yeah, so? Uh, what have we learned about physics? All we did is have a, a mathematical description so far. Okay, so this is where we're getting with this electricity thingy here. Okay, and um, so uh, says you know we're, we're going to look at this positive negative. Okay, and so we need to find out what we mean by this, right? A positive current is defined as what having the same direction of flow from the most positive part of the circuit to the most negative part. Like if we understood something there, you know, a positive current is what uh, from the positive to the end to the negative. Great. Current defined in this manner is called conventional current, okay? But the motion of negatively charged electrons around an electric circuit is deemed positive in the opposite direction to that of the electrons. However, depending on the condition, uh, conditions, an electric current can consist of a flow of charged particles. Okay, we're gonna, uh, uh, now it's not flow of charges, but charged particles. What are those particles? They are coulombs. That's what those particles are. In either direction or even in both directions at once. So have we learned anything? So it means the charges can move in one direction. They can move in both directions. And uh, they call it, uh, if it goes in this direction, we call it positive. If it goes in that direction, we call it negative. Those are all descriptions. So far, we have not learned why. What causes something to go in the negative direction or in the positive direction? We have no idea what, why one charge also opposes a similar charge and attracts a dissimilar charge. Why a negative attracts a positive and why they flow in. And then when you get down to it, they say, well, what was this charge that you talked about for the last two hours? Oh, it's a number. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's what it was. Okay, so uh, this takes us to alternate current. You know, there's a difference here. Uh, remember, you got direct current, which is the flow of electron beads, I guess, from atom to atom, from one pole to another, from the positive to the negative. Maybe it's the other way around. Who knows anymore? Uh, but then you have the alternate current. And that's a big problem because you're saying, hold it. If you... Turn on the circuit, you, you have a closed circuit, and now all the electrons flow in one direction, right? And that causes some effect because you can put a light bulb there and it turns it on, great. But now you're going to run it in one direction, then run it in the opposite direction immediately. So it goes back and forth at great speeds. Are the electrons going all around to the other side and then coming all the way back to the other side? Is that what's happening? They're going around in complete circle in one way very fast and then in the other direction very fast. And they say, no, not quite. Only when direct current does the, do the electrons move in one direction. But when you have alternate current, it goes back and forth. 
And here it is. Direct current is unidirectional flow from the positive part of a circuit to the negative. Okay, great. This flow is carried by electrons. I like the fact that they carry the flows. Okay? Yeah, they, they carry motion all the time. I like the way they talk. Alternating current pulses back and forth within a conductor uh, 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 without the charge moving any net distance over time. So now for alternating current, there is very little motion. It just goes like back and forth or up and down. There's no real motion going to one end and the other. So how do they produce effects if no electron is reaching, you know, the opposite pole? You know, like if an electron is negative, so-called negative, and it has to reach the positive pole, great. I mean, if, if it just moves back and forth locally, it's not reaching the end of the line. It's not going to the end of the station. So, so how do we imagine this uh, in the real world, in the real world of physics? <coughs> it says it delivers energy. Aha! Now we introduce the word energy. First in one direction and then in reverse. Okay? While the particles themselves can move quite slowly, sometimes with an average drift velocity, only fractions of a millimeter per second, the electric field that drives them itself propagates at close to the speed of light, enabling electrical signals to pass rapidly along the wires. So what they're saying here is um, the electrons, they're not going all the way. They're, they're just moving back and forth locally. We don't know why. We don't know what, are they changing atoms? Are they moving from one atom to the other? Or what's going on here? Okay. And, and they say, well, that's moving very slowly. They drift very slowly. They usually use this explanation for alternating current, okay? And what they say is that uh, they, what, what really travels is the field, okay? And uh, the signals. So what, what's, uh, what's really moving are the field and the signals. And here you get an idea, okay? You have this situation. Here's the direct current, okay? Let me get this out of here. <clears throat> and uh, here you have the uh, uh, direct current. It goes in one direction. They go all the way, and this is what they'll show you for uh, direct current. Okay, uh, no problem. I think uh, we can deal with it. But what happens when you look at uh, alternating current? And here you see it, side by side. So now, uh, is, is that a little weird? In one case, the electrons go all the way, and we can understand all the electrons going through there. But in the other, the electrons just go back and forth, or maybe it's up and down. Maybe they just vibrate up and down. The question is, are the electrons going from one atom to the next? That's the question. And if they are, are they coming back? To the first atom, so the so an electron leaves one atom, goes to the, one, the the neighboring atom. Now it's coming back and coming to the first atom back again, or maybe to another one, another neighbor nearby. But it's going back and forth. And the question is, what is triggering uh, this electron bead to move? You know, from uh, in this um, uh, conduction band. In other words, going from one atom to the next and back again. Uh, what's the mechanism to say it, it is so? is just their interpretation. It doesn't mean that they've figured out how the universe works, how Mother Nature does this magic trick. Okay, so unless they can illustrate it, you know, uh, they've said nothing. Nothing in physics. They did stamp collecting. And that's what they did. Okay, here we have a fellow we talked about the other day. Uh, his name is Derek Miller, and he uh, says that, you know, the electrons really don't flow, like, all around. What they do is they move very slowly, just a millimeter or micrometer or who knows how little they move. And again, you would think that they're moving from atom to atom, and they don't talk about that very well, what's happening there, because they say, yeah, the electrons move. Well, what, what's happening? I mean, are you saying that an electron is moving from atom to atom to atom to atom to atom all the way to the end of the station, the end of the circuit? And then when you have alternating current, it just moves from one atom to the second atom, then back to the first atom again. How does that make the light turn on? <laughs> I mean, and how, how is that? Problem? What's triggering, what's pushing the electron out of the atom and forcing it to be at the neighboring atom and back again? What, what force? What is this force? What, what is it, a spirit or what is it? Okay, and here we have Mr. Derek Muller. And he said, well, you know, electrons don't really go around. Okay, uh, they do, but they don't. And he's got really a confusing um, image of all this dynamic image where he shows the electrons moving in one direction remember from atom to atom right but the current is flowing in the opposite direction see you see it here okay you have the uh, electrons which are those green balls they're moving towards the left but he says the current is towards the right great i mean you know very very straightforward okay we don't know what, what he's talking about what's moving to the right if all the electrons are moving to the left okay but um uh, so so that's how he illustrates it but then he says this notion is wrong anyways 
okay and what it truly is is something like this okay he didn't illustrate it I had to illustrate it for him what he said and he's saying it's more or less something like this okay where the uh, the electrons are really like moving very little maybe moving to the side maybe back again especially in alternating current or maybe they're just moving up and down uh, you know from atom to atom or who knows because they don't specify what is happening physically they just say we we measure the coulombs we measure the electric current uh, the ac the dc the current uh, the amps you know they, they're talking about measurement they're not talking about what's physically occurring in that region uh, of the wire okay along the wire and okay let me get move this out of here in a second here okay uh, so what's the problem with this well among others uh, this is the big problem the problem is they don't have an atom. We don't know what their atom looks like, okay? And here it is. This is their atom. Make it a little bigger here. Um, what they're saying is the electrons are moving from atom to atom. But this model requires the planetary model, or the Bohr-Rutherford planetary model of the atom. It's saying that, you know, you have this little bead that's going around uh, or is in different energy levels uh, within certain orbitals, as they're known. Okay, great. So what keeps that electron from flying away completely? Why does it stay there and why, what causes it to move from atom to atom later on? So we don't have causes. We don't have mechanisms. All we have is an assumption that the electron is a little bead, little particle that is in an orbital or energy level, which is a region around an atom for, we know for no reason why it's doing that. We don't know why that electron doesn't fall to the nucleus. We don't know why that electron doesn't fly spontaneously away. And then when you have electricity, like you see up there, direct current, okay, uh, it goes from atom to atom for no reason whatsoever, simply because it likes it. Say it's a voltage. Well, what's a voltage? Well, think of it as a river flowing, like, you know, uh, downhill from the mountain to the valley. Uh, that's an analogy. Give me what's happening inside that world. They cannot imagine. They cannot uh, make sense of it. Okay? That's the problem. So electricity is first defined, which is a problem uh, because uh, people want to treat it as a physical object. And if you define it, it's not an object. An object is that which you can, uh, which has shape, which you can point to and draw and uh, illustrate and see. Okay, but you can see it only uh, because it has shape. Even if you're not around, it has shape, irrespective of you. And you don't have to touch it either. You know, an object is that which has shape. Does electricity have shape? And no, because it's a process. It's a, it's like fire. Fire is combustion. There is no thing called fire. But people say, but I can point to it. I see something. I see a shape. Yeah. It's a process. It's known as combustion. The object is uh, oxygen, molecule, or atom. Okay? So we have to learn the wording in physics. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, here we have the electric universe, and they, uh, they fight against the establishment. But they, they do the same thing as quantum mechanics. Uh, I mean, their name is Electric Universe, and here you look them up uh, under the Thunderbolts Project, which is their uh, site, right? their primary site, and you say, what is electricity? Okay, and they say, <clears throat> electricity is a fundamental what quality of matter, so it is used to characterize other things, thus consensus opinion is lacking precision. In other words, they're already giving you the fine print. They're saying they're not going to be able to define it. Like all bedrock presumptions, such as gravity or time, reducing electric terminology into smaller units is impossible because it lies at the bottom of the lexical well. And you can see the troubles these people have in defining the word electricity, even though it forms part of the title of their organization, the electric universe. Electricity, how do they define it? They define it as the flow. It's a flow of something. Okay, Electricity is a flow. Therefore, electricity is not a physical object because it is a flow. Give me a second here. And um, uh, so what is it? Flow of what? Electric charge. It, travel, it says this flow travels. Okay? It travels through a circuit. Okay? And, um, and then you see next to it there it says electricity moves through a DC circuit in the wires as particles of charge. So we have electricity is defined as a flow. Now they're going to say that electricity, this flow, it moves. Okay, so the flow is moving. Okay, and so we we uh, we run into all these troubles. Okay, because they, you know, they, they have all this wording that uh, simply takes them uh, in uh, in all these directions that they cannot explain, they cannot justify, they cannot illustrate for you. They define electricity as the flow, and then they say the flow is moving. And then they say that electricity is a physical object. Okay, so you figure it out. Okay, so um, 
Here we have uh, their version. They say, um, what is electricity? It's the flow of electron beads from atom to atom. Here you have a circuit, you know, anode and cathode, and this is essentially what they have in mind. What do we propose instead? Well, we propose something that looks like this, okay, compared to theirs. Okay, let me get this one out of there. And what you see is the comparison. We're saying that uh, all these shells, electron shells, are merged, and they spin in situ. So they're twirling around. So our version of electricity is a little different than theirs. And again, yes, electricity is a process, a dynamic process. Okay, so let's get to the conclusions. Okay, what have we learned about electricity from all these people? Well, here it is. Uh, math is, electricity is the flow of charges. That's what they say. What is a charge? Well, it's a number. What is a field? It's a number, a bunch of numbers. So we have an, a charge, number, floating inside a field, which is a bunch of numbers. Okay, that's, that's what you have today, because that's how those words are defined. It's not that I'm... Uh, uh, you know, raising a straw man or putting words in their mouth. This is how these words are defined. If you don't like them, define them in a different way. If you think they are physical objects, illustrate them. That's how simple it is. And if charge is a number and field is a bunch of numbers, well, you have a number and a bunch of numbers. That's what uh, force is or power, or, uh, the work that uh, charge does inside a field. You know, what have we learned? And so charge, uh, moving in a field, that's what force is, okay? It performs work. We talked about that the other day. Uh, there's no definition for positive or negative. Okay? We don't have any uh, notion of what that means in physics. You know, they just say positive, arbitrarily, we're going to call this one here positive, this one here negative. That's it. Whatever that means. You know, what, what does that mean in physical terms? We have no idea. And why does positive attract negative? Again, we have no idea. We have a mathematical description, no physical explanation. AC circuits don't flow. They drift locally. And they just go back and forth. See, when, when you see that going around, that's a direct current. And they say, see, this is electricity, all these beads going around from atom to atom. But then for uh, AC, <laughs> they have them going back and forth between the atoms. And you say, well, so it, this electron never reached the terminal. You see what I'm saying? It just goes back and forth. In fact, it drifts slowly, they say, in both directions, I guess. So uh, AC is a little different than DC uh, in, in the notion that they have in the physical interpretation of what's happening to the electron. That's my point. Okay? Fields and signals are the ones that flow, and they flow at the speed of light. Okay? So what they say, no, the electron is not what's flowing. What's flowing is the field. What is a field? A bunch of numbers. What is a signal? A concept. Information. Uh, they say information flows, energy flows. Those are all concepts. So we haven't learned anything. We don't know what physical entity is flowing. You know, you can say that a uh, river flows. Why? Because there are atoms. So the atom is floating and flowing. We can understand that. But when you have a number that's flowing, well, that's a little difficult to illustrate. Okay? And then, yeah, they use a planetary model of the atom. That's another no-no. Uh, rope model, very simple. Uh, it's uh, merged shells uh, twirling in situ, and it looks more or less like this. Okay, that's our model. It's all physical. It's all done with objects. Okay, we have uh, the atoms are merged, the, uh, the electron shells, okay, or membranes, they're merged, and they swing the uh, threads around themselves, which are going to form the magnetic field. Field is not a bunch of numbers, at least the magnetic field is not. It's a bunch of threads, physical threads, that are twirling around the atoms, aligned atoms, because that's what electricity is.